So likely you're getting into 3D printing, you wanna do some multicolor 3D printing, and you're looking for the best like bang for your buck, beginner 3D printer, and you're looking at the Anycubic Cobra 3 V2 combo. In this video, I'm gonna unbox and give my first impressions of this machine to try to give you guys some feedback on it. What's going on? I'm Dylan from Saturday Morning Props, where I teach all things 3D printing, from droids and helmets, full cosplays, things like that, to printer reviews and my first impressions and, and long-term reviews of different printing machines. I'd love to give tips and tricks and help you guys out and to help you guys along in your 3D printing journey. Holy crap, it feels like it has been such a long time since I've done a long form video. I've been doing mainly short form, but yeah, sprinkling in with the printer reviews and things like that. And today we're gonna to be talking about Anycubic's Cobra 3 V2 combo printer. This video is not gonna be a review because this is a sponsored video by Anycubic. Super grateful to work with them. Glad they sent over the device. This will be unboxing, first impressions. I'll show you what the setup is like, how easy that is. I'm gonna do color prints to make sure that the color changing is working well. And their ACE, which is their color changing system, see how well that does. Talk about the things that I like about this device and a few things that I think are the cons of the device because it can't be all sunshine and roses. So let's get into it. Right out of the box, everything is packaged super solidly. There's solid foam everywhere. It was nice and contained and super clear instructions on how to assemble this thing. Assembly really took me like maybe 20 minutes tops. There's a lot of Bowden tubes connecting the ACE over to the actual device. Trying to get all of those tubes through the little connector that's like the wiring harness up on the top of the gantry was a little bit of a pain, but overall really not a hard thing. Setup, like I said, was about 20 minutes. So these bed slingers are really common now. There's definitely other ones out there on the market. You have the Bamboo Labs A1, you have the Creality High. It is a Core XZ system with a direct drive extruder. And this one is really nice quality. The extruder is really nice. It has a quick change hot end on there, which is really nice. And they upgraded their hot end to have anti-leakage. Um, I think it's the same hot end as their S1, which is their uh, box printer that they have. It has a really nice bed leveling system there, which in 2025, you need a printer that does auto bed leveling. I do not want to touch a printer with bed knobs ever again. So I'm super grateful that this printer does. It is a great entry into 3D printing. So that way people don't have to deal with that. That was the trickiest thing about getting into 3D printing two years ago and doing paper tests and all these things. And Chep was coming out with a little thing that you put under that would beep a light whenever you had to level the bed. All that stuff gone. Bed leveling is super easy now because it does it itself. And it does it well. This printer can do 600 millimeters per second, but likely you're going to be doing 300 millimeters a second or less, um, 250s, things like that. Uh, it's still very fast. When I first got into 3D printing, I was doing like 50 millimeters uh, using things like the ZR10 and stuff like that. So yeah, this is definitely very fast still. It is a great speed um, and the quality stays really good. It's 250 by 250 by 260, I believe, build volume. So right around the same as the other competitors out there in that same thing. It might even have just a slightly edge on the vertical, but slightly smaller on the build plate. But shockingly, that's actually enough volume to do helmets and things like that for about 95% of helmets for an average size head. So the biggest draw to this machine is the color changing. It can go four or eight, or you can go no combo, but that color changing is a nice advantage to this. At this price point, sub $500, I think it's sub $400 right now. Uh, getting color changing for that price is awesome. The ACE system's very nice, and it's also a filament dryer, which is really, really great. But it does have some flaws, and we'll get into that later on. If you're liking the content, like, comment, subscribe, all of the YouTube things. It really helps the channel out. It's really helping me grow and doing crazy awesome things in the community. I try to give back as much as I can, so I really appreciate all of your support. And I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Props. There's a few different tiers of subscriptions that give different models, one for the first tier, two for the next one, and there are a lot of nostalgic stuff from video games and from TV shows and stuff like that. It's really, really fun. I've been really excited to work on that, and I hope you guys come join me over there. For slicing software, I use Orca Slicer. Make sure you get it through the GitHub. Do not do one of the sketchy links. Try to get it from the GitHub, none of the random websites. 
but inside of those you have that printer listed it already has great settings on there and it is super easy to use i have a tutorial about how to use orca slicer and everything like that so it should be super easy to help you guys out so when doing test prints, I never do a Benchy or things like that. Everybody can knock out a Benchy at this point. I could knock out Benchies on really old printers and they would come out great. Um, so I really just print things that I want right off the bat. For me, I did a cool supportless statue uh, from the video game Death Stranding. I love that game. The second one just came out. And so, yeah, making my own statue as like a collector's edition item for the new game. It was really awesome. It nailed it right off the bat. I did like a 0.16 quality on there, like an optimal quality, and it came out really good. And like we mentioned, the big draw to this printer is the color changing. So I had to think of what to do color changing, and I made these Superman coasters. And I was a little worried in the beginning. The detail on those has to be really nice on that first layer. So you have to have a great first layer, and it has to be super accurate. And they came out awesome. I think this is a really good example of showing how well that color changing system worked also had to go with the trend of you know superman coming out soon and lastly i printed out one of those la boo boo doll things and that also came out amazing and it was actually a good test of this machine as well because you had to click in the hands or the eyes into them so the the pupils had such a small peg that it had to go around and it fit perfectly so i mean the accuracy on this machine that is a great strong example to showing how accurate this machine is I was really impressed on how well that clicked together. I don't know what a Labubu is really, but it did it really well. So yeah, it's like sub $400, amazing quality, color changing, all of these things. 20 minute assembly, it auto leveled itself. I immediately threw a model in there and it knocked everything out of the park right off the bat. I think that makes a great case for it being an amazing beginner printer or just somebody that wants a lower cost multicolor changing printer but let's go over some of the critiques that I have for this thing. One, the footprint is huge. What I mean by that is when you have the ACE next to the printer itself, it takes up a big area. I can fit two massive printers in the same spot that that takes up. This is a 250 by 250 printer. And the fact that I can fit a 350 by 350 and a 400 by 400 next to each other on the same shelf that would take up the same space as this one is pretty crazy. I've seen in one of their advertisement there's some way to get the ACE to stack on top of the printer, but I haven't seen the files for that. But yeah, uh, that would help. But in general, yeah, it takes up a lot of space. And then again, with the AC as well, because it's a filament dryer, it has its own separate power cord. So it's gonna take up two power cord slots with the AC combo. That may not be a critique for you and it might be fine, just something that I thought was, man, it takes up a lot of real estate. The printer also froze on me twice when loading up. It was super simple to just turn it off and turn it back on and then it booted up the next time. But in a fair, honest first impression, it did happen to me twice. But that's really my only critiques. Again, this is a sponsored video, so you can take everything I say however you would like. But I can tell you, first impressions wise, I'm very impressed with it. Again, for the price point, multicolor printing, it works really well and it is a great entry into 3D printing or a great budget option for color printing. And eCubic does an amazing job of keeping things affordable and does tons of sales. So keep your eyes out and check regularly to see if AnyCubic is doing a deal on this printer because it's a really good printer so far. Catch another video after this like how to use Orca Slicer. Love you guys, peace.